everyone. Welcome back to Doodling Through Education. Today we have a science video and for my CC students this is cycle three week 16 science. For everybody else that just means we are going to start talking about the four, uh, first four elements in the periodic table. Before we get started, I wanted to remind you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already so you never miss an episode of Doodling Through Education. I also wanted to draw your attention to a link I put in the description. If you want to support the channel, you can do so there. It's through a website called Buy Me a Coffee. Without further ado, let's start doodling. Today we are going to dive into the first four elements of the periodic table. The first element that we're going to talk about today is hydrogen. Now, in previous videos, we've already talked a good deal about hydrogen, but we're going to review what we know and add a little to it as well. Hydrogen is the first element in the periodic table. We know that it is the simplest possible atom and it only has one proton in its nucleus and it is orbited only by a single electron. Its atomic mass is just slightly over one, making hydrogen the lightest of the elements and is the most abundant element in the universe. At standard temperature and pressure, hydrogen is colorless, odorless, and tasteless. And it is a gas. Hydrogen is very flammable and burns with an invisible flame. When it comes into contact with oxygen is when it burns. The byproduct of hydrogen and oxygen and its explosion is something that we all know. It is water or H2O. And this is the most common place we find hydrogen on Earth, in our water. Each water molecule contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, hence the name H2O. There are other places that hydrogen is found on Earth, but water is by far the most abundant. There is very little free hydrogen in the Earth's atmosphere because it is so light. It is so light that it eventually goes and escapes out into space. The only free hydrogen on Earth is actually deep, deep, deep underground. We use hydrogen for many different things. We can use it to make ammonia for fertilizers. We can use it to refine metals. And we can use it to make material like plastic. Hydrogen is also used in rocket fuel where liquid hydrogen is combined with liquid oxygen to produce a very large explosion. English scientist Henry Cavendish discovered hydrogen as an element in 1766. He discovered hydrogen and at the same time he also found out that it produced water when it burned. Let's move on now to helium. Helium is the second element on the periodic table. It has an atomic number of two, meaning of course that we know it has two protons. Its atomic mass is slightly over four. It comes in second for the most common and lightest element in the universe. At room temperature, helium is also colorless, odorless, and tasteless and is a gas. It's very interesting because helium has a very low boiling and melting point, meaning that it is generally found in a gas phase, except under incredibly extreme conditions. Helium on its own is really actually fairly rare on Earth. There is very little in the Earth's atmosphere because, like hydrogen, it's so light that it just escapes into outer space. But helium is constantly being produced in the innermost core of stars. Deep inside a star, there is intense pressure, and this causes hydrogen atoms to actually convert into helium atoms. In doing this, it creates energy, heat, and light, and that powers the stars 
including our own star, the Sun. This conversion is called nuclear fusion. We use helium in many different contexts, but we mostly use helium in balloons to make them float. It is not as light as hydrogen, but if you think about it, it is a much safer gas because hydrogen, like I said, is incredibly flammable. Helium was first discovered in 1868 by an astronomer named Pierre Janssen. He noticed the new element when studying a solar eclipse. Let's continue on through the elements. Next up, let's talk about lithium. Lithium has an atomic number of three, which means, of course, that it has three protons. It also has an atomic mass of 6.94. At room temperature, lithium is actually a soft metal and is a silvery white color metal. It is the least dense of the solid elements and is the lightest of all the metals in the periodic table. Lithium is also very reactive and very flammable and needs to actually be stored in mineral oil as it will react with air and it also will react with water. It will burn you if it comes into contact with skin. So much care is used when handling lithium. Here on Earth, we use it in a variety of things, but the one that it is most often used in and that you are probably most familiar with is lithium batteries. We also can use lithium in the manufacturing of ceramics and glass. Lithium was first recognized as an element by a Swedish chemist named Johan August Arfvedsson in 1817. A year later, a an English chemist by the name of Humphrey Davy was the first one to isolate it in its pure form. Last but not least today, we are going to talk about beryllium. Beryllium has an atomic number of four, which means what? That's right, that it has four protons in its nucleus. Its atomic mass is a little over nine. Beryllium is actually a very rare metal that is almost never found in its pure form on Earth. In its free state, it is a very strong metal, but it is also a very brittle metal, and it is also silver gray in color. Comparatively to other metals, it is still very lightweight, and it has one of the highest melting points of all the light metal elements. It is also a non-magnetic metal. Something important to know about beryllium is that it is considered a carcinogen, and this big word means that it can cause cancer in humans. It is also very toxic or poisonous to humans and should be handled with care and never tasted or inhaled. Beryllium can be found in the mineral barrel, and this is most often found in the Earth's crust and in volcanic rocks. Most of the world's beryllium is mined and extracted in the United States and Russia, and the state of Utah supplies almost two-thirds of the world's beryllium production. Another place that beryllium can be found in gems such as emeralds. We can use beryllium in a number of different ways. Many of its uses are pretty high-tech or in the military, but one application is in windows for x-ray machines. Beryllium is transparent to x-rays, which makes it a good substance to use for these windows. And that is all we have today. Um, your homework this week is to take all of this information and see if there are any other ways that these four elements are used here on Earth. And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.